Right and what's going on, folk? Uh, this is your what up, what up? And uh, Ross in here, man. Uh, ITC podcast episode twenty four. Um, yes, yes, yes. For you guys and ladies and gentlemen, uh, we do. Uh, yeah, so we're gonna have a couple of uh, officers um, that we. Yeah. Um, one is going to be Ross's dad. If you guys didn't know, his dad is an officer. Been one for uh, about twenty years, and. Um, mm-hmm. A very good friend of ours that we went to school with um, as an officer as well. So, yes, um, yes, yes. Today, from both officers, both African American, so that way we can kind of get the perspective of them, how they feel about things going on nowadays, their take on it, <clears throat> um, how they would do things differently. And, you know, we're just going to kind of try to pick their heads and their brain and kind of let them talk and explain themselves as well. You know what I'm saying? We got a platform, so we want to make sure yeah. seeing both sides. Uh, of what's going on and how they feel because uh, there's not there's not just bad cops you know there's good cops and yeah cops. um so we want to kind of get the perspective on both sides and see what they feel so um for sure kick back relax we're about to get into our our interview bag and we're gonna go ahead and do this all right anything you got to play ross just do it <laughs> you see it you see the shirt one day, Nike. One day. One day. Yeah, one day. Just, just be a day. Just be a day. <laughs> How's that? That's better. That's better. Yeah, that's that's better. How's it going? I'm all right, young man. How are you? Pretty good. I to <laughs> finally meet you. It's, it's been yeah. like <laughs> several years I've been knowing Ross, and I never met you. So, formally, yeah. first off, I want to. Uh, say thank you for coming on. And oh, absolutely! Thank you for having me. Hey, thank you for joining and thank you for uh, being a part of uh, the podcast. And you know, joining yeah. giving us your take on uh, things nowadays. And again, nice to meet you, man. It's it's that's pretty cool. Man. <laughs> All right, young man. Nice to meet you. So we uh, just did our uh, little intro. Um, we kind of want uh, to get. Well, with what's been going on lately, just around the U.S. and just in the whole, we we kind of wanted to get a uh, a police officer standpoint, you know, because I think I've been seeing a lot on social media, and this is it's it's a double edged sword for me. I've been seeing a lot on social media how yeah. how people have this mindset of you know, f the cops, you know, what I'm saying just in a broad generalized statement, and it's it's it it sometimes goes unsung that there are actually officers that are, you know, they try their best to, you know, help within the system. And I, I, I want to be able to shed light on that and, and kind of get your personal experiences and, you know, just how long you've been on the force and, you know, how you try to, you know, change the community, you know, one day at a time. So um, if it's cool, could you uh, let some of the people know, you know, um, your department or, or where you police at and how long you've been on the force? Well, I, I'll, I'll say this. I, I've been on the force for 24 years, so I've, I've been uh-huh. around quite some time. And uh, mm-hmm. obviously, I've seen a lot of changes. Yeah. Uh, I've seen a lot of changes within the police departments, but within certain police departments, you, you read about it, you hear about it. And it hasn't always been the change that we all need. Yeah. Um, so, you know, my, uh, uh, to go, we all know without stating the obvious, what we all saw, what the world has, has viewed. And, mm-hmm. and I, I think it's a great thing uh, that uh, people are out there. Uh, they're demanding change. Right. They're demanding yeah. change. And that's what we need. And it's unfortunate that it, it certainly took a tragedy for yeah. change to come about. Um, will there be immediate change? That remains to be seen, but I'm certain mm-hmm. and I firmly believe that there will be change. Uh, my experience, uh, even before I became a peace officer, mm-hmm. uh, I, I just know that uh, uh, I've been stopped a, new, a number of times mm-hmm. um, and it angered you. I yeah. certainly can't compare to, to what 
what others have been through in terms of being injured or even worse. However, mm -hmm. uh, there's no doubt that uh, there needs to be re reform um, mm -hmm. within the judicial system. Uh, sure. There's no doubt that sometimes uh, no one wants to believe this, but uh, uh, the term that uh, that's being used or bandied about is implicit bias. And there are those who refuse to believe, uh, particularly uh, uh, of white, some white Americans refuse to believe that it actually exists. Uh, mm -hmm. I do believe it exists because, again, I've been stopped numerous times uh, prior to me becoming an officer. Certainly, I've been stopped since I've been an officer as recently as uh, two months ago, um, simply because, let's just call it like it is, sometimes mm -hmm. officers profile. Right. Course, yeah. that, and they do. Some officers yeah. profile. Uh, this is true. I, I know I, I'm, 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 you probably have heard it. I'm just preaching to the choir. But, uh, you know, I, 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 I know that officers, uh, and let me, let me back up. I know you all, like we, again, it goes without saying, we know what happened with Mr. Floyd at some point. Mm -hmm. So people called me immediately after that. And the question was, what would you have done? Right. And to me, that upset me. Because if you know me, yeah, you obviously know that wouldn't have happened. Mm -hmm. That would not have happened. There's absolutely mm -hmm. no way I would have allowed that. Because mm -hmm. what we have, we have a system here, and certainly we're far from perfect. Yeah. You know, our department is rather strict on pretty much everything we do. Um, I'll give you an example. You take other departments. Let's just take a minor infraction. Let's just say you were to run a red light, okay? That officer pursues you, and you subsequently injure or worse kill someone you're ultimately hold you're ultimately held accountable but the officer isn't and that's where you're talking about that qualified immunity where it's hard mm -hmm. to sue each officer it is it's hard mm -hmm. now our department that same situation you were to disregard a red signal we are not allowed to chase simply because of that the need mm -hmm. to apprehend the subject does not compare to the safety of the public, so a, a traffic mm -hmm. infraction. So I go back, there are some departments, they, they can chase at will, and you can read about it where, where people have lost their lives because officers chase someone simply because they ran a red light. There's a story in Austin right there, an Austin statement that I just read just before I came on with you all. This mm -hmm. happened in March of 2019. A gentleman coming home from a poker game. It doesn't really matter what time, but early morning hours. Live PD was following them, that, that TV show. Long story short, for a failure to dim your lights to oncoming traffic. Oh, wow. So as a result, when they caught up with him, he was allegedly tased four times. He even said, look, I suffer from heart. I have a heart condition. Mm. Unfortunately, he died. Here's what bothers me about this. There's so many of these situations that you and I don't know about. Mm -hmm. And there should be more, as they say, transparency. I know that's a, that's a word that's also bandied about, but there should be more transparency. And again, I've, it, 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 you know, I've been stopped. I've been an officer 24 years prior to that. So I've been stopped maybe 20, 25 times. That's cool. wow. It was all unjust. It was all unjust. Um, had an, uh, a best friend that posted on my Facebook about the Black Lives Matter. And you know, you would always hear the statement, all lives matter. All lives matter, yeah. But she wrote, a, she, she posted, and I'll forward it to you. She posts, I'll share it with y'all rather. And then she said, I get it. She said, I get it. She says, that statement is belittling saying all lives matter when Black Lives Matter. Mm -hmm. Until Black Lives Matter, then all lives will matter. You see what's where she was going with that, because we were out one night and went to movies. So pulled up into her park into the apartment complex. An officer approaches us. Certainly didn't approach me. 
But guess what? Ask her, hey, are you okay? At that point, she realized, mm -hmm. wait a minute. Why come to me? Because she's a white female. That's why. Another time, I've been stopped simply because of the condition of my car, the way it looks. I've been told, why don't you go back to where you come from? By other officers. I'm not necessarily saying within my department. Yeah. But within the area. Um, here's what I, here's what I tell, like to tell people, okay? Is um, it's hard. It's difficult. It's difficult, particularly when you when you're when you you, you you've experienced it yourself, or um, a number of people have uh, you, you you've heard about it. You see it on the news, and those that we don't see. Let's take the shooting of Breonna Taylor. Absolutely mm -hmm. ridiculous. I do not believe in those types of mistakes. Mm -hmm. I don't believe that you get the wrong house. Well, no, I don't buy that. I don't no. buy it. I don't buy it. Yeah. No. If somewhere were to break into your home, what is your natural reaction? Protect. To defend it. Yeah. Yeah. Defend it. Sir. And they should be held accountable. It should yeah. be. That happened in Houston last year where they killed the couple that were my age. You broke in, you, 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 there was a, a, a search warrant, a search mm -hmm. warrant that you lied on. And as a result, a husband and wife were killed. That should not be tolerated. And they mm -hmm. should be prosecuted to the fullest. Yeah. Again, there's so many that are out there, but my experience has always been, you know, when I, in fact, I am stopped. And, you know, this is a valid question someone asked me. Because I always will say, because there's no way else, other way you can say it is, hey, what if you, you know, you stop, you do everything that you're supposed to, but there's a potential that you can always, something can go awry. And that is true. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what do you say to that? What do you say when, hey, I did everything that the officer asked me to do? And yet, I understand that I could possibly get seriously injured or worse or die. Mm -hmm. And that's sad, you know, because now my, my biggest thought process now is just the, the generation now that's growing up with TV, that's uh, it's right at the forefront, like with social media and everything going on. Yes. Um, when it was going on when we were younger, of course we knew. I think the first inclement that I ever gotten was the Rodney King situation. But even then, yes. too young to even... No, yeah. Going. I think it had already happened years after. Cause I was born in '92, so it already happened. But it had time, already happened. You already one years old. Yeah. 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 So I, by the time I I even knew, I still didn't even understand what was going on. But now with technology being so clear, um, with it, with it, with it being like the focal point right now, you know, everybody's at home. Um, you know, it's everyone's pretty much idle. So like they kind of have to see what's going on. So right. You know, thing is to the kids now like that's, that's boiling something up on the inside of them because now they're just like man what's going to happen if I come into a cop what do I do and some of them mm -hmm. are actually becoming more aggressive against cops even when they don't even know if they you know are good or you know they're people right, are right. this transparent just like what mm -hmm. they do on social media you mm -hmm. know? So, um, you already spoke about the change part so what I did want to ask with that, did you see change uh, over the 20 years um, for better or do you see it more as a worse thing when it comes to the department? If you if you're just talking about my department, I'll, I, of course, I'm biased and, and that's mm -hmm. understandable. But I had a gentleman in, in, and uh, Michael knows he's one of my best friends, Bobby Williams, who was a, mm -hmm. an officer and a, a detective. He has since retired uh, mm -hmm. several months ago. We had each other to lean on, mm. and we had, and I'm gonna go ahead and say this: he's, 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 you know, an African American, but we had each other to lean on right. for 19 plus years. Oh, it awesome. was amazing because, because there were times when, you know, there are times when, hey, we can go to each other and say, look, this is, this is, what do you think about this? Mm -hmm. We questioned some things throughout our years. And 
some things that have been status quo for a number of years prior to us getting there. Right. We were able to change some things um, for the better. And I'll give you an example. Let's say that you and someone, y'all, y'all reside together. It doesn't matter. You all reside. I'm not saying you're in a relationship. But at that time, if the person, the other, your roommate or what have you, he or she were to get upset, call us, you would have to leave because you're not, quote, unquote, on the lease. Well, we mm-hmm. realized we started doing some research and we, did, we, we, did, we determined that, wait a minute. Hey, you're telling a person who's, who's been living here for seven years has established that his or her residence and we're kicking them out. And, I, we, and we refused to do it. Right. And of course, the argument was, hey, you, this is how it's always been. It's the law. No, it's not. So here's how we fought back. We did our research. Uh, we spoke with uh, an attorney uh, uh, within Brazos County. And, and then he or she can, he said, look, y'all are absolutely correct. And so he did a meeting and said, look, this is the way it is. The way you've been doing it for all these years is incorrect. And that, and they realized when, just because police officers or police departments have, it's been status quo, doesn't mean mm-hmm. it's, it's right. Wow. So for our department, because again, we have a strict department, okay. and I'm I'm thankful that we do. I'm grateful. Uh, I spoke with our chiefs uh, before I said I was going to come on with you all, and they said, "Hey, that's fine because, hey, we trust you," um, and they're in agreement also. There's no way we would have allowed that to happen here. Yeah. And in order to start building relationships, officers mm-hmm. have to get out in the neighborhood. I know it's a cliche. Yeah. Yeah. And you've got to build some relationships that was my with the point. people in the community. And if you mm-hmm. work in a community, you need to know about the culture within that community. You need to know it. Mm-hmm. I don't care what what it is. You need to know. You've got to build a relationship. You've got to establish a rapport with people in the community. And it will go a long way. Because I've had situations where people have wanted to fight me. They've wanted to fight. But because of people in the community, they came to my, because of what, what, what we've established in the community, they came to my rescue. And you know what they told the other person? It ain't. I'm gonna tell you, like I said, it ain't happening. They weren't gonna let those. They weren't gonna let that guy get to me. They weren't. They're like, no, 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 no. You're not gonna do this to Ains. That's, that's awesome because we. Mm-hmm. That's all because you have to get out and walk. I'm not talking about driving through in a car and waving yeah. your hand. <laughs> you've yeah. get out and, and you've got to have the hard conversations. Mm-hmm. You've got to have the hard conversations. You know, I give you an example. You know. Let's just take Drew Brees, the comment that he made. And he was being uh-huh. vilified for standing up for what he believed in. Mm-hmm. Here's the deal. That's what you believe in. That's okay. However, he was, quote, unquote, as they say, tone deaf, but didn't have mm-hmm. a conversation with him and say, look, he wasn't protesting. He wasn't, he, Kaepernick wasn't even because he was disrespecting the flag. It wasn't about that. That's how you approach and say, look, you, you, you've got to have these hard conversations. I don't mean to ostracize or vilify someone simply because they don't agree with you. Mm-hmm. If it were in a utopian environment, you and I, we wouldn't have this. But this is far from it. It will never be a utopian environment. It will never be perfect. And if everything was so easy, we would never have dialogue to get things changed. Different mm-hmm. uh, Difference of views encourages dialogue. In my opinion, it might be unpopular. It might upset me, but it encourages dialogue, constructive dialogue. And so when people who are against it, you educate, educate them and say, no, you're missing the point. You know, Mm -hmm. I hear other officers, they'll say, well, you know, if they wouldn't have done this, if they wouldn't have done this, no. No. You're profiling and it's up, and like I said, I've had it where an officer is just because I looked at him and he stuck his head in my car. You know, now I'm not going to do anything foolish because you yeah. can't win war. 
Wow. You can't win it, you know? Wouldn't have done anything foolish, but I fought back in a different way. Yes, it takes some time. It does. And my situation or anybody else's situation cannot compare to what happened to Mr. Floyd. Cannot. Yeah. And no way any of us can make a comparison. So that's certainly not what we're not what I'm saying. Um, but I, I just see some of the things that I've watched since I've been off for quite some time and some of the things that some of these officers have done. It's unconscionable. Yeah. The pushing yeah. the seventy five year old man down. That was, that was it is sick. It. it was sick. Sickening. To hear an actual a thud or a crack, and he's bleeding. The officer attempts to render A, and the other officer pulls him up. Yeah. Yes. And the other officers walk right on by him. And you know who rendered who rendered assistance? A national guardsman. Uh, mm -hmm. It wasn't another police officer. A national guardsman. That was absolutely sickening. And then what's even worse, in my opinion. When they all those officers gather to show support when they released when they were released on their own recognizance, all those officers gathered outside the courthouse. What message are you sending to the people? Yeah. What what message are you saying? It's okay to assault someone. It is. Is that the message? Nope. And you and you sat there and you clapped about it. The two stu the two students. In the vehicle, mm -hmm. yeah, I seen that. One. You you break the window. You don't give them an opportunity. Yeah, you were being cleared, and yet you're in a vehicle. So quite naturally, you're probably like, "Wait a minute, how am I going to get out of this?" You break the window, and you automatically tase the driver, and said, "Because you saw a gun or thought he had a gun, and that was fabricated, also." Yeah, I think when people are tired of that, I fear for my life time now. Like, oh, absolutely, it's a catch-all phrase. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's not like for people that are trained to fear for their life to expect people who aren't trained to to act accordingly when they fear for their life is mm -hmm. it doesn't balance. Is it, I can't wrap my mind around that because if if a person who you know don't know how to act. I don't know how they will react in a tough situation, get scared and make a gesture that, you know, puts fear for an officer who's supposed to be trained in these situations. And then that mm -hmm. of being the one shot or, you know, killed just because they reacted, you know, that's a mm -hmm. horrible. I mean, even the, the same case of Fernando Castile, how, you know, he, he let the officer know that he had a, um, a license. He had let him know he had a weapon in the car and he let him know that he had a license for it. And to still get shot in front of your daughter, who's in the back. Yeah, and he still died. And still died. Still died. He like, did everything man. correctly. Yeah. And he was, and he was acquitted. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Acquitted. I just don't understand it. And then it, 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 it's like you kind of realize with the court, like where where's the humanity? You know, you have a daughter in the back seat who's calling her dad's name. You have the girlfriend in the passenger seat who's recording who you also. Uh, taken to custody as well, just because she's scared. I mean, she's seeing her yes. other bleed out. I mean, I wouldn't know, you know, I can't picture myself in that situation, you know, where my dad or somebody's bleeding out and I'm not going to react. You know, it's just yeah. me to react. Sometimes. It's a natural reaction to react. It is. Yeah. So it is. You would get, you know, maybe, you know, shot. You know, something could happen to you as well because being black and mad is like a uh, almost like uh, a dangerous effect that they mm -hmm. like to play on. Like when you when we get mad, it almost seems like oh oh oh, oh. you know it's like oh it is. You're right. Mm -hmm. You're right. And I hate the statement. And and uh, and I apologize for interrupting you, young man. Mm -hmm. But I hate the statement when when invariably they'll say oh that's when you know if we're discussing oh that's a, you're just an angry black man or angry yeah. black woman you never hear them say an angry white person you never hear them say that not and it's not about us being nope. angry it's merely we're debating mm -hmm. so simply because we debate we're considered angry you know i just had a situation uh um uh, uh, several months ago and uh so i'm on my way to work 
all right, so I'm coming through the campus of a and uh, I see, you know, several, uh, several blocks away, uh, uh, a police unit is, is um, obviously in a hurry. So I tell James, I said, I said, James, you just, you just get your phone and just hit record. He said, why? Because I know he's coming after me. Wow. I know he is. Mm -hmm. So as I'm making my way, I'm already in the city of Bryan. I see the officer and he is gunning him to catch up with me. And I'm like, James, I don't want you to say anything. I just want you to record. Don't say anything. If he asks you questions, you do not respond. Now, I know some officers might take offense to that, but you're talking to me. Mm -hmm. you're talking to me talk to my passenger. If mm -hmm. it's merely a traffic stop. So I said, you're not to respond. You're not to say anything. Right. So long story short, the only reason I didn't get stopped, well, of course he profiled my old car, and I have an old car too over here. <laughs> my son can tell you that. It's because <laughs> he saw... He saw my, I was on my way to an off duty job. So he saw my patch, oh. but he, he backed off. But I still had a problem with that. Yeah. yeah. Why were you coming after me when I didn't commit an infraction? Why? Mm -hmm. I know why. I know why. And so I, I, if I'm, you know, tell people I'm in the car, hey, let me do all the talking. You know, um, I've been, again, I've been stopped for numerous things and it's, it was unjust. Uh, one time someone stopped me saying, where are you headed to? Oh, and I was going to in Northgate just because it was a a, a, a wedding reception. Mm -hmm. And he says, you appear to be going nowhere. And they brought four officers because they said I had a, uh, a license plate light out. So four officers surrounded my vehicle. I've been and, <laughs> and I said, I'm not obligated to tell you where I'm going because I'm not. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm obligated to show you this produce my proof of insurance and my driver's mm -hmm. license. That is it. Mm -hmm. I don't have to engage you in conversation about where I'm going or where I'm coming. Mm -hmm. It is of no consequence to you. Mm -hmm. And so long story short, when he realized he was writing the ticket, when he realized, when I said a place of employment, I said the city of Bryan. And he says, well, what do you do for them? I work for the police department. Well, what do you do for them? Mm -hmm. what a He's so incredulous about it, condescending. Mm -hmm. I'm a peace officer. Oh, the whole demeanor, his whole demeanor changed. But mm -hmm. I encouraged him, continue writing the ticket. Go mm -hmm. ahead. Right. I, I, I welcome this. The same energy. <laughs> I will see mm -hmm. you in court because I know mm -hmm. why you stopped me. You know, and then he wanted to have a conversation. Says, no, mm -hmm. because I don't mm -hmm. treat people like that. I, I just don't. I don't treat people like that. And that's scary. It's not the old golden rule. And I do firmly believe in it. I don't treat people like that. So, like I said, uh, I, I can still here forever and ever. There's just so many stories that, that I've been yeah. Um, yeah, I definitely the officer that's do this. Go ahead, go ahead. No, 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 no. I was just saying I definitely understand that. It's it's just scary because I feel like more people like our age, I'll be honest, the, like younger, wouldn't even know yes. what to do in a situation. We don't know the law. Like you know, it's like. We wasn't really prepared enough in high school to, you know, understand what do you do when you get stopped by a cop and stuff like that. And like mm -hmm. coming out of high school, I wouldn't have known. We've been through the whole. No, they didn't. Like, you know, and uh, but now they, you're right. You like like this is is really just a placement just to stop you and to see if you have anything or you know just to kind of scare you into getting a yeah doing something. I know. Me personally, uh, a few years ago, I'll never forget this. I actually talked to you about this, Dad. Uh, I was heading in the Pearland, and I saw the cop. Yeah, old Pearland. I saw the cop. I knew I was gonna get pulled over, so I stopped. I was at a, I was at a intersection, and I stopped. Complete stop because he's behind me. So I'm not about to just roll through it, you know, because he's literally right behind me. So as I stop, I look in the rear view. He's still behind me, so I. I go up. There's a, a complete another intersection, and you have to stop. It's like a it's a four way intersection, so everybody takes turns. So right. I stop there. He's still behind me. 
So I drive. It's like this little back alley street that takes you to the back side of uh, all these different stores and stuff. Uh-huh. So he's still behind me. I was like, he's gonna pull me over. Like he he crept up on me. I was like, yeah, he's definitely gonna pull me over. And sure enough, lights came on. So I pulled over or whatnot. Didn't make a fuss about it or anything. He came up to the car, asked me for my license and registration. I was like, cool. Hand it over. No problems. No issues. So then things started getting weird because he then he he asked me, is this my vehicle? Like, do I own it? Mind you, this is a 1998 Honda Accord. Cracked <laughs> windshield at the time. He asked me, this was my vehicle. And at the time, I had my title because I had just got the title. It was pride thing, you know, me owning my own thing, my own property for the first time. So, yeah, I had the title in the glove compartment. You know, I just, I had to care. And I was like, uh, if you want me, I can get the title for it. Gave him title, names on it, everything. So then, after that, he asked me about my tattoos. Mm-hmm. Like he was asking just about my tattoos, what they what they mean, and uh, I I was confused because I'm like I, I don't I don't know what's going on, but you know at that point I didn't have to, of course, but I know he's he's it's like I was getting this vibe like he's egging me to get agitated, and, and I was having Absolutely. a good day that day. So he's asking me about my tattoos. Oh yeah, this on my right here says I'm blessed. Show him this one. I'm blessed. You know I'm I'm showing him just whatever. So then after all of that. After he checks, run my plates, everything's clear. Nothing on it. Gives him back my information. He said, you may want to get that windshield fixed because my windshield was cracked because you may not get past inspection. Mind you, my sticker is new. It's brand new. So, obviously, I, this, I got the sticker after uh, the windshield was already cracked. So, that wasn't it. So, and then finally, after that, before he walks away, he said, I stopped you. Because you was rolling, you rolled through a stop sign. And I'm and I was like, I don't believe that I did, officer, but my mistake, I'm sorry about that. And he went on by this day. And it was funny to me because it was just little things he was trying to nag at. And I know for a fact if that was initially the situation, you would have just said that. But you started asking about my tattoos. That had nothing to do with anything. You asked me if my vehicle was mine. If, it, if, if I owned the vehicle, I showed you all the paperwork and everything. Then you talk about my windshield and it's like, well, clearly I have my registration. So that's not the problem. And then finally it comes out to, oh, well, you rode through a stop sign. And it was like he was just searching for me to pop off. As soon as I popped off, it could have went a whole, it probably would have went left. You know, but I, I kept my cool. I kept my composure. And I remember talking to you about it at the time. And it was just, it was it was really unnecessary. I, he wasn't even a white cop. He was a, a he was a Latino. He was a Latino cop. He wasn't white. I, I forgot. I think I remember. If it it was like Hernandez, that was the last thing I remember. His last name being Hernandez or something like that. But it was just one of those things where it's like I'm I'm not even doing nothing, you know. Mm-hmm. So it's it when people make up that, well, well they'll say, oh well, maybe if you wasn't doing anything, then this wouldn't have happened, and you wouldn't have gotten pulled over and that. It's not the case. It's my skin. It, 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 it's yes. My skin color is is the reason a lot of times to get pulled over. Now, I can understand if I make an infraction. I've been pulled over. You know, I had expired tags or whatever. Cool. Understandable. Procedure went normal. Fine. All right. Cool. But if I'm literally not doing anything, you're just coming up with reasons to try to, you know, egg me on. Then it's like, then why did I get pulled over? And that's you know, I'm not, I'm not trying to be uh, another statistic in the system. It just sucks that I have to, you know, a lot of times, me personally, I do get tense. Even if I'm not doing anything illegal in the car, not speeding, I legit, I get tense when there's a police officer around me. And it shouldn't be that way, you know? And it, it sucks even now. Uh, it's just one of those type of things where I feel like I have to have a phone out. If I, if I get pulled over, I feel like I have to have my phone out. I had to have it recording just in case something happens. You know, I can do everything right. Let them know, hey, I'm reaching for the glove compartment. I can say that. I'm reaching for the glove compartment. Here's my license. I'm reaching for my wallet. I can verbalize all that, and there's a good chance I could still end up getting hurt or potentially killed. And it's it's just sad. It's really sad. So Scary, man. Sad. Yeah. Sad. Scary. 
And, you know, the, the biggest thing to me is, uh, I said this on an episode ago, um, my wife asked me, because we have two sons, and she asked mm-hmm. me, what are you going to tell them when they get older? And it just, I, I think I paused because I never would have thought that that was something I would want to have to even talk to my kids about. Absolutely. Like, about fearing the people that are supposed to help you only because mm-hmm. of skin color. And um, it really dawned on me about the day and age we're living in. And, you know, I feel like a lot of this was already going on before, but now it's just the fact that now that you can record it and now that Absolutely. you can capture it, I, I kind of look at it as maybe it's uh, going to bring about a change. Because before they it will. They it will really nilly on people and <laughs> that's absolute and you you and I we we're the non wiser because you, we don't know it. It, it. What's really disturbing about these and there's some plenty of them, but these this last week again we go back to you you, you push the uh the the gentleman down. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then and then the P the, the, the PIO officer, the public information officer, or whomever says, Well, you know, uh they were clearing the air and he tripped. When the video came out, oh, they had to retract. Oh, he was shoved. He was assaulted. The mm-hmm. other one with the the same thing with the vehicle with the t- two students. You mm-hmm. said there was a gun present. Then when you listen to the tape, you realize there was no gun present, but you lied about it initially. This this is what really bothers me, and that's what's bothering a lot of people in America. That you have the police, these police departments who are who who before they or they just willfully will not reveal the truth. Or coming out and saying and saying, oh well, you know this person did this. Oh, by the way, mm, we may. You go back to Brianna Taylor. They already had her ex or whomever they were looking for in custody. Another another agency, but you lied and said that you not, you did not. That's what really. That's what's really scary. And so I'm glad you're seeing this. Uh, that you want to introduce uh, legislation to. To, to, to remove some of that, uh, that that shield that's covering or surrounding officers because it is hard, you know? It is. If you and I were to shoot someone in the car, well, guess what? You know what would happen to us? We're civilian. That's it. We, we will be charged. Mm-hmm. There's no doubt. There's no doubt. But here's, here's what I'm about to say. You remember what uh, happened last year when the, uh, the tourist was killed? by the officer and he was sentenced to 12 years him and his partner were in a vehicle yeah and she ran up and she knocked on she startled the officer he shot and killed now by no and he was sentenced to 12 years by no means am i certainly condoning what he did but mm-hmm. did you did you realize how many people came out in support none because mm-hmm. he was from somalia he was a black officer mm-hmm. you see and i'm not condoning what he did Mm-hmm. But you didn't see no one step up to say, "Hey, he was he was startled." Right. You know, someone banging mm-hmm. on your car, you're in your vehicle, but you saw no one come out mm-hmm. and support him. But yet, and again, a loss of life. It's not it, you can't even compare it to anything else. But yeah. you have an officer who pushes down a, a man and cracks fractures his skull. Jesus. And you walk right on by him, and you step over him. Like he means absolutely nothing. Yeah, it's it's. Indian. And there are people who have the audacity to say, "Well, he should have approached the officer." Okay, you know, I mean, people in my years have approached me, and I've had to say, "Hey," and they were upset, or for whatever reason, please don't, don't come any closer. You got to give them, give them some signs. Yes, people should know. Don't go up and touch an officer. Yes, they should know that. Mm-hmm. But if they approach you. You set up and say, look, no, you need to stay right there, sir, ma'am. I do it all the time, mm-hmm. all the time. And there's a way you can say it. Yeah. You don't have to be condescending. You don't have to be incredulous. You don't have to be mean. There's a way you can say it. If and after that, he or she refuses, then you have to deal with it in a different way. Mm-hmm. But I'm talking about just merely people approaching you. Right. So I see this as, as, as great for America. I do. I do. It's it's super awesome, and I'm glad that it now is is it's kind of like the you know what's what's going on in the dark. The light now is just <laughs> yeah. on it, 
and they're sweating because a lot of that, just like you said, they they have to retract things because they didn't know somebody was recording. Now it's like everybody has devices everywhere. It's something recording twenty four seven. So now you really have to be careful about how you move because you lie about something in your report and then it comes out to say, hey, yes, video actually shows you did this. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, no, nah, okay, well, maybe we did show him and then I thought he tripped. I didn't know mm -hmm. something he did him. And, you know, so it, it, it hopefully, again, I uh, see I was also reading a report, uh, an article about police reform. And I was also reading something about Minneapolis. I don't know how true it was, but um, they were talking about doing uh, community policing and just disbanding the department as a whole. So I was going to look further into that and to see um, what they were talking about in that aspect. That, that's a great question because when you talk about defunding, disbanding, mm -hmm. exactly what does that mean? Because I've heard a lot of people mm -hmm. who have been commissioners, they were, or they were talking about it, or retired commissioners just listening to people across the nation exactly what does that mean because truly no one knows what it means i get the defunding where you're gonna what new york is allocating now because new york has police department has a their budget is six billion and now they want to allocate their they want to move some monies to uh social services and i do think a lot more needs to be moved into in mental health and uh, education i'm in all in agreement with that but like you said there needs to be a lot more um a, 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 more people need to come to the table and, mm -hmm. and, 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 and define exactly what it means. Because if you, let's just say it has been used, the, the disbanding of an apartment, a, a police department has been used at least three times. I think the last time in 2012, you look it up, I think in Camden, New Jersey, mm -hmm. but then it doesn't tell you the size of the department. Right. You know, could it have been a small town, a really mm -hmm. small town or it doesn't, but then you had an agency that came in. It was also done, I think, in L.A. years ago. But you had the L.A. County Sheriff's Department that came in and took over. So if you're talking about disbanding, am I in favor of it? I'm in favor of reform. Yeah. I really am. I, I, and I, do you want to shift money from the police department into social, mental, education? I'm all for that, too. But... Uh, I, I, I'm in agreement with you, young man. Exactly what does it mean? And I don't think anyone knows at this moment, but I think they're on the right track. Right, yeah. They're on the right track. No, absolutely. And I, I feel like with a lot of people voting, people know. <laughs> people know now they need to vote. People that vote. They really do. <laughs> I really need to get out and vote. That is so, it, it, there's no, you know, you know, me and my wife talk about it, you know, well, my vote doesn't matter. Yes, it does. It matters. They care it now. Matters. It also matters how you speak to people. Yeah. When you have a voice and you know your views might not be popular, but in a time of crisis, in this mm -hmm. particular time, it's amazing the effect that someone, and you know who I'm talking about, mm -hmm. commander in chief, yep. it's amazing what you could come out. Because we all know a nation of many chances you come out and give a message of unity, hope, yeah. and not this, this, hey, let's just, let's just, let's use force, let's overwhelm, let's dominate. No, absolutely not. No way. Mm -hmm. It's amazing if you just come out and say, hey, look, I'm sorry. Yeah. But now here's what I intend to do. We all need to do. We all going to come together and we're going to sit down and we're going to have a serious debate and we're going to talk about reform. We are the judicial mm -hmm. system. Just try. We're going to talk about how, you know, how these police officers are, 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 are shielded. And I'm going to tell you the most powerful, it's usually not the police department, it's the police unions. They're powerful because they will yeah. shield those officers. They will. They're powerful. You know, so I just, I think we're heading in the right direction. Uh, but we certainly can't forget about the Breonna Taylors, the mm -hmm. Sandra Blands, because you're having just as many females. They're just not as high profile. You yeah. take the one in uh, Dallas, mm -hmm. you know, when she went to the wrong 
I will never agree with that because if I don't care, they were like, well, you know, she was tired after a 12 hour shift. I've worked 24, 38, 48 hours. I know where I live. Yeah. Even if I, even if I had just moved there, I know where I live. I just don't understand that one. I don't man. buy it. <laughs> nah, no. You're not, you're in your own home. You're in your own home and you, you still do. die in your That's own home. And you still, and you wonder, and some people like, well, uh, you, you, if you just do, don't tell me that. I don't buy into that. He was in his own home doing what he was supposed to be doing, whatever that was, and he still so, died. The know, other one where Dallas, uh, uh, the, uh, there was another one where the guy shoots through the window, shoots through the window, yeah, kills the lady. Her nephew playing the game or something? Yes, yes. Why? Why would you do that? Why? There's no excuse for it. And for, for, for those that say, well, I know, I don't buy it. There's no excuse for it. None whatsoever. None. I, I do have there, a question, though. Like, yeah, to, go ahead. Not to, not to cut you off, but this, this no, is like no. my, final, my final question. So it, with the Academy, like, is there no such thing as like a warning shot? Or is it really taught to just, once you shoot, shoot just to kill? Because even like when people are like fleeing or something like that, I never thought it was that serious to shoot at somebody fleeing away if they're not um, posing like a threat or anything or they're like not firing back. But I do see a lot, like even just in a lot of videos where when officers start to shoot, they shoot to not get a warning out of you. They shoot you to just end it. Yeah, here's, and that's a, that's a great question because uh, uh, people ask all the time. Our policy is, let's say, for example, you and I just have a, a spat. Mm -hmm. And I say, hey, stop, because you uh, shoplifted something minor. Right. And you continue to walk away. Our policy, this is our policy. <clears throat> I don't have a right to take my taser out Ooh. and discharge it. I don't. I don't have a right to do that. That's our policy. There are some agencies you can fire and tase at will. Not our agency. Mm. Let's just say if you're standing on a curb, just a regular old curb, all right, you're cursing me out, whatever the case may be, I cannot fire my taser because you're on a curb. You know why? Because you'll fall off the curb, and guess what? There is the potential for you to yeah. suffer serious bodily injury. So we can't fire our tasers at will, uh -huh. and, and, and we can't, and we are held accountable. Uh, now, let's go to the extreme, and I've been in this situation. Let's go to the extreme. Let's say you've had a, a violent felony. When I say violent, weapons were involved, guns were discharged, okay, by the, the, the offender. Mm -hmm. So... You're in a neighborhood. Clearly, you can see this individual is fleeing from you. Right. You don't have a perimeter set up because obviously you just got it. You're just matched to it. Mm -hmm. He's already fired upon us or others. Um, we can, we can use the amount of force necessary, which is deadly. Now, I know you're saying, well, people are saying, well, if he's running away, <clears throat> but to allow someone to get into a neighborhood mm -hmm. that could create more havoc. We have a duty to stop that threat by any means necessary. So now you remember the one that happened in North Carolina where the gentleman photographed where the officer, the guy took off running because it was a, a damaged taillight yeah. and he shot him and then pretended that the, the guy tried to take his, uh, his, his taser and he shot him in the back. No, he didn't have a weapon. Okay, even if he, let's say if he, he punches me, but he runs away, he fractures my orbital socket. As angry as I am, I can't fire my weapon at him. He's running away from me. He doesn't have a weapon. And therein lies it. So if you've got a weapon, you've committed a violent felony, yes. Um, but you have to really think about because it can't believe, well, I believed he had a weapon. 
mm-hmm. or they turn out to be a cell phone. Yeah. yeah. Okay. They can't be that. It has to clearly, it's been clearly established that this individual shot at someone, shot at the police or had a hostage. It can't be, well, I thought, yeah. well, it looked like, no, it can't be. Too much room. So there. again, yeah. So again, our, 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 our policies are strict and I, I know some officers have problems with that, our younger officers, but I, I'm grateful that they in fact, because when we realize what they're about, you gotta go, you're out of here. We can't have that. And I've always said, I will, you know, my biggest compliment that I get is from you know, the people in the community. It's the biggest compliment because I have fought with people and years later, they have seen me out and they're like, I just want to appreciate you, Hayes. You fought with me, but you kept saying, will you just calm down? <laughs> will you just calm down? I've had, and I've done it. And people will come up to me years later. I, and they appreciate that. They appreciate it. And I don't hold grudges. I don't. What happened, happened. And we move on. We know there are some officers who will pick and pick at you. They yeah. will. They will. And so I, I, I the, but the, the, the biggest, one of the other compliments comes from a judge, a district judge in this area. He was a defending attorney. I went up against him. He ripped me to shreds. I went to him and says, what can I do to be better? And he says, you write down what you observed and nobody else. You are concerned about you and you only. He once told me, he said, I worried about you at one time, Haynes, because I didn't think you would make it because you're too nice. Now he's my biggest supporter because I went against other officers on the stand. I did. I went against other officers. And by the grace of God, I'm still standing. Yeah, you know how because that- I am not going to cover for anybody. I will not. Awesome. And it was rough. I, it was rough. And they didn't, the judge didn't think I, 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 but every time I go into his courtroom to get a warrant or whatever, he'll stop in his court. It says, there's the honest man right there, an honest police officer who does the right thing. So I, I don't look for my, you know, it's great coming from my peers, but even more so from the people in the community. Right. So I know what it's like to go up against our officers. I know what it's like, you know, uh, go up against another office within your department. Mm-hmm. Well, I've, I've done it. And I, and, and I would do it again. I would. That's, like, that's integrity and that's that, that kind of keeps people, you know, optimistic about uh officers and stuff like that. And you know, you know, it's 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 an incredible thing because, you know, in a in a time period where they're trying to shun the officers and make all of them into one bubble, you know, mm-hmm. right. good. And that's why we wanted to use our platform uh to bring on officers to just show like it's it's some great ones out here, man. It's not yeah. all have the same mindset, the fact that you went against officers because people feel like there's a blue shield where it's like... Yeah, that blue line. And yeah. I don't subscribe to it, young man. I don't subscribe to it. I can't stand it. I don't subscribe to it. And, and the other thing is, I need to cut you out. The other thing is, just have, have friends outside of the department. Mm-hmm. Have friends. You don't want your conversation dominated by who you chase. True. Mm-hmm. You don't want to look at everyone and and all of a sudden, everyone is a suspect to you. Right. You don't want that. I've seen it too. You have to have someone who is not affiliated with a police department. Mm-hmm. And so you can just have fun and talk about other stuff. Occasionally, yes, because it's invariable. Invariably, people will ask, hey, what happened? And seen, my wife asked me all the time, what happened? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. She get all of it. Something. Because you, you get so consumed with it. Yeah, and, and you you think everyone is a suspect, right. and that's not who I am. I play ball. I play ball with guys that uh, I've had. Guy come up to me and says, "Haynes, I got a felony warrant out of another agency." <laughs> and I tell him, "Well, I'm not taking you in because I'm not working." But you see where <laughs> I'm going. Yeah, some <laughs> officers will only play with other officers, right? But I will play with people who have had trouble in, with the law, but they learned. You know, they learn and they see. They see, hey. Haynes is cool. He's an officer. I'll tell these youngsters, they'll come, 
I heard you Lalong. I said, man, don't come ask me about because I'm here to play ball. Right. Mm-hmm. He's here to play ball. That's it. You know, if you've got a question, I can't, I can, I can maybe give you some guidance, mm-hmm. but I'm here to play ball, I'm not here to talk police work. And that's respect. You, you'll give respect all the off that. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. That's all people want, man. It's like, cause they just want to feel, and some people don't have fathers too. So they, they, they kind of find the wrong role models and, you know, just, just run into and, and they do. Yeah. You know, it, and you're right, young man. They, and they do. And I just, it's, 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 it can be difficult. Mm-hmm. And uh, the thing I'm happy, most proud of is I'm pretty much still the same happy go lucky guy I was when I started. So, mm-hmm. and I don't, I haven't become cynical even with all this going on around me. I haven't mm-hmm. become cynical because I'm still going to treat people the way I want to be treated. That's good. Yeah. Always good to hear. Well, officer, <laughs> we thank you so much for joining us. Well, I hope I gave you something. I know I rambled on a lot. <laughs> no, it's, do we wanted to bring, give the platform uh, to you. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, um, it, this is what people need. And we wanted to use our platform to kind of push the motive that, you know, there's great officers out there. Thank God that we know some. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but you know, it's to give people an idea. Like you know, there's there's people on the inside, on the officer side, that's fighting for justice just as much as we are. You know, mm-hmm. we're all together in this, and we're all under God's umbrella as we're supposed to be. And uh, just praying that things going forward um, is worked out, and with things now being put on the forefront, it's it's time for change and an actual change. It is. And, yep. It will, there will be change. Yeah, there will, will be. I believe it. And hopefully these kids kind of get to see it as well. Uh, mm-hmm. I, you know, how one thing went from a Trayvon Martin situation where, you know, people don't feel yes. like it, mm-hmm. to, you know, George Floyd and to now, you know, the whole, it just seemed like the whole world is, is champion for change. So, Oh, the whole world is, and that's wonderful. It's yeah. a good the whole it's world good. is championing the cause, and it's it's great. Uh, the whole world. I'm not the whole world. No, no, I've it's seen great. clips from London. All London, the- every everywhere. <laughs> it's wonderful. It is. So, uh, it is. again, for joining us, um, we're definitely... Oh, absolutely. And hopefully we can do this again. A yeah, we can do it again. We'll, you know, we'll have some... Y'all have some questions drum up for me, and I'll be more than happy. And, um, like I said, uh, you know, it's it's great, man. I, I, think, I think it was... I think uh, I think my, it was Michael that let me know when when there was a story about me on KBTX about yeah, he told know, me high school student. Uh-huh. <laughs> he told yeah, me so. That's cool. Yeah, it, it was it was nice. It was nice. It was nice. They were high, you, you're talking about a high school student said, "Hey, you know, he's always been at my games. He supported me," and that's what you're right. That's what they have to see. They have to yeah. see that. So, well, I appreciate it. Thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you. We shall get together. Okay. Okay. And you tell, I tell you this, but I don't think Michael remembers when he was a, I think he was a senior and uh, his, uh, he had left his uh, asthma medication. But that'll be another story. And I had to deal with two school resource officers and how uh, they were being incredulous. Uh, and I had to tell Michael, uh, you know, that, that's another story. But my point is, <laughs> seriously, it's just, you know, when an when a, when a, a individual miss that he or she say, hey, I'm wrong, leave it at that. You don't have to pile up on them and continue to pile up on them. And I'm, I'm speaking from an officer's perspective. It's enough. You don't have to berate, belittle, or anything. You know, but that's another story because I had to, to, to deal with those two officers to let them know this is not how you talk to people. Simply because any officer didn't know I was an officer. But mm-hmm. I had to, you know. But anyway, we shall do this again. It was fun. Definitely, definitely, Dad. I uh, appreciate you coming on here, giving giving your your takes on different situations, and uh, just shedding light on just just the police community as a whole. Just from your standpoint, we really do appreciate that, and we just like Dad was saying, want to use this platform to you know not promote hate. We want to promote change. We want to inform people. And hopefully this could, you know, saying if, if there are potential officers that are watching us, that watch our channel, maybe this inspires them to be more engaged and more active in their departments and, you know, voice their opinions on certain things that go on that they know is not right. Because at right. the end of the day, 
if we if we're silent, nothing gets changed. Yes. So we gotta use our voice, use our platform to promote the change that we want to see. You know, so we I really appreciate it you coming on here, man. I really appreciate that, Dad. Okay. All right. Okay. All right, man. I'll meet you later. All right. All right. All right. Bye. All right. All right. Oh man. Well, also, man, glad that I finally got to meet your dad. Don't like the fact that it was under these circumstances, but nevertheless, he set a mouthful. He was uh, honest. You know, that's that's the number one thing I took away from him. Honest. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Yeah. That's that's the dad, man. That's that's the OG right there, man. Yeah, man. I was looking for the resemblance, man. I was like, oh, yeah, you did. You don't see it. I look more like my mom, though. I used to look more like my dad, but as I got older, I look more like my mom. But as you get older, older, you're gonna look like your dad again. Maybe so. Maybe <laughs> so. Yeah. Uh, he he was definitely a, uh, a stand up, stand up individual, as you can tell, just from this conversation. So yeah. Most importantly, so uh, we have the OG uh, officer just in, and I know you guys. Hopefully, y'all enjoyed that. Um, mm-hmm. Now we're gonna have one of our good homeboys that we went to school with, he grew up with. Uh, he's now an officer as well. Um, mm-hmm. Go ahead and join them in. We're gonna get his take and kind of do the same thing uh, to let him speak and let him get his, you know, viewpoint out of what's going on, how he would do things different, and what he's seeing more on the rookie side of things uh, versus what you know he thought it would be like. You know, so mm-hmm. let's get uh, Officer Pinson in here. You got the full version. Yeah, you had to. Cause I was like, damn, I know we went over 40 minutes. Yo, what's good? What's good? I think his audio is connecting right now. Yo. Hey, what up? Going on, man? What's going on, Officer Pinson, man? We appreciate you for joining in on episode 24 of the podcast. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, I mean, I can hear you. Okay, great, great, great. Audio's good and everything. So, yeah, man, um, we just got uh, uh, through talking to Ross's dad, been on the force 24 years. And uh, mm-hmm. he was able to give us his take, his side, things he's seen. Of course, he had tons of stories that he couldn't share because uh, it was so many. But um, we wanted to get your view as well, more on the rookie side, uh, to kind of just talk about, you know, yourself in general. Um, things you've seen that you were maybe surprised about, and uh, just pretty much kind of walking the people into who you are as a person. Oh, and he went away. Oh, there you go. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> I got the Teddy Riley going on, man. I don't know. Man. Now, uh, let me let me give my disclaimer first. Um, before, man. Yeah, my thoughts and views are based on my personal experiences and opinions. They do not reflect my opinion. Boom. All right. So uh, what's what's up, man? Um, what on, man? <clears throat> so you want to know, like, kind of like what's you want to talk? You want to first start off with what's going on right now, like? Yeah, yeah, kind of, kind of want to. Yeah, so grab the floor, man. So with the with the George Floyd situation, you know, rest in peace to you, man. Yes. Yeah. You George. know, I remember when I, I got put on Facebook, man. When I heard about it, I mean, they hit home because that, you know, that's you know, he was bred on the south side like we were, so yeah. I was like, man, like that's somebody from our, our area, bro. So that kind of hurt me, man. And, and this is not the first time this thing has happened. Of course, it's happened millions of times. You know, people have just, you know, we've gotten people arrested or fired, and then you know, you never hear anything else about it. Mm-hmm. It's just the cycle just continues, and you know, it's, it's hate towards the police and it's hate on the community. And my thing is, like, even right now. It is crazy because, like, during, during the, with the, I guess, the peak of COVID, mm-hmm. we just started doing a lot of stuff in the community. We were passing out PPE packages, those boxes of, you know, mm-hmm. cameras and, and, and face masks and sanitizer. And then you turn around and then this happens. It's like, you just, it's just, this whole situation just shitting on everything, all the hard work we did. Right. All because of, you know, a department that didn't take pride in finding good people. Because you know, you just I don't know if you just heard like a lot of those guys left. Like the guys on their um I guess okay. SRT team, the special response, they left, man. You know, so those probably were some bad apples too, you never know. Right. 
trying to I'm like huh? Trying to like kinda of also like do they own somewhat like protest? Yeah, I mean, like, they like, well, we, we don't like the fact that you fired an officer. But I'm like, and, and usually with departments, and I know I probably hear this a lot, oh, man, y'all just need to chill out, you know, wait till the facts come in first. We don't know what happened in the beginning of the video. And I and those those are pretty good stances sometimes. But this case, it's like, dude, we saw the entire thing. Right. Mm -hmm. us. So it's like, what what more do you need to watch? Like, what, what do we need to review at this point? Have you seen enough? And uh, now – People are, are talking about they're looking into George Floyd's past and you know he's been uh he's been in jail a few times. Uh, apparently he, he pulled out a weapon on a pregnant uh, woman, he was sent to jail like five years, something like that. And it's like, okay, if all these things happen, all right, it is what it is. We're not saying, oh, he was the the most upstanding citizen, you know what I'm saying? People make mistakes, people do bad things, but what happened to him? Whether he, you know, whether he did those bad things or not, what happened to him was not right. Doesn't matter. In that right. moment, that that whole procedure was incorrect. And I, I, I don't like it when people try to spin it. Well, you know, saying why are we, you know, giving this man this type of why? Why are we rising now? Of, you know, getting upset by the situation now when someone they were, you know, a criminal. And it's like, I think you're missing the point. At that present moment, he was in a situation where he was pretty much, he was apprehended. They, right. they, he wasn't going nowhere. All that yeah. extra stuff was unnecessary. And, and I, I don't want people to get distracted by the person, you know, his past. We need right. to talk about and understand <clears throat> what happened right there. It's not necessary. And if you believe, if you're, if you're trying to justify it, there's something wrong with you. Simple as that. It doesn't matter what they did in the past. They're dead now. They're dead. They can't even, you know what I'm saying? They they, they can't even defend themselves for their past mistakes or atone from their past mistakes because they're dead. So what does that's, it matter? And that's the thing, man. Like, you know, I'm, I'm going I'm to give y'all something you probably wouldn't expect. So mm -hmm. when we got back to work, I guess it was the day after the uh, every, the news broke out. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a captain. She's a, she's a Caucasian uh, female. We have a captain. I uh, love her, man. She's dope. Uh, she's from the sheriff's office. She came from there, and then she came to us. Mm -hmm. And uh, she was just – she emailed us all and was like, hey, man, for, for one, we don't like what happened. Those officers are wrong. If you feel like there's something – if you feel like you're upset because of whatever, you know, you need to pretty much go ahead and hang it up, dude. And like, she was just being real. Like, if y'all don't feel the way we feel right now, you don't even need to be here. And yeah. I feel the same way. You need to go ahead and hang that badge up, put that uniform up. You know, hey, go ahead and go do something else. Because uh, we don't have, you know, we're trying to push this thing forward. and We're, have, we're trying to push the culture forward as far as, you know, p p policing the community, you know, community policing. That's something that we're trying to push. That's our agenda. And the last thing we need is is another, another death. Like, that's <laughs> like a slap in the face to not only us, but to the community that trusts in us to do the right thing, right. you know, because we all are from the community. When I take that badge off, I'm, I'm going to be real with you. I'm, I'm still a, you know what, I'm still a nigga with a, you know, yeah. I'm yeah. still a black. Right. Yeah. You know, so it's like, I don't, I got the same, I, I can run into the same situation he ran into just being on the side of the road, you know. So the last thing I, I want to do is, is, uh, is push that, that energy like that. So we wanna we wanted to change the narrative, man. It's like, man, like we just we took ten steps forward and I would take taking ten steps backwards, man. Like we just got it together. You didn't hear about no killings for the last well since before what was man, when was that uh Ahmad, Ahmad. Taylor, I think it was the last one? Was it Brian? and Amar, yeah. Like Brianna Taylor and Ahmad Aubrey. But yeah, before them, man, you you before them, I think who was that the other guy? Um God damn. Forgetting his name, man. Um, both. What's his name? Start with a B. Both them. Mm -hmm. Dude, that was the guy that got shot in his house by the. Uh, oh, you talking about in uh in Dallas with the. the yeah, league? yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, like before him, we have. It was pretty quiet, man. Things were kind of getting better, and then it's like, damn, now we're right back to where we were. 
And I remember uh, I had a conversation with my, my field training officer, man. He was just saying, like, he was asking me how I felt about everything going on. And I was like, man, you know, you, you got to remember when I joined, I joined right after Sandra Bland. Like, not joined, I joined the department. I wasn't actually a police officer yet, but I had joined the department. Right. But, uh, I, don't know, I was actually at Prairie View the time when, when Sandra Bland, when she was, you know, when she got stopped by that officer. And we, uh-huh. you know, got to the academy, we talked about that. We talked about, what that officer should have done, and we, we realized that hey, he was wrong. You know, he but she basically had him by the nuts because whatever she said to him got him so upset. Where you know he wanted to pull out the car and all this extra stuff, and he could have killed her right then because when she, I think she hit, she hit her head or something like that. Like she could have died right then. Mm-hmm. You know, that's that's. I mean, that's dangerous, man. When you messing with somebody like that, like when you when you're using. When you're not following procedures, you know, one thing I'm going to tell you right now, there's nothing in anybody's policy or procedures that that even point towards using force, touching someone's neck. We never touch anybody's neck. That mm-hmm. is all. Awesome. Mm-hmm. So we do that, not. Totally. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, I couldn't that's even watch the video. Like, yeah, I couldn't even watch the video, man. Like, I couldn't even take myself, like, <laughs> to even watch it. I seen the screenshot of it and just... Right. You know, social media and I, I, that's when it first happened I was on Twitter and I'd seen like a few seconds of it and I was like man I don't want to watch this like I don't you know I was, you get so tired and frustrated you know and right. I just felt myself getting mad I'm just like man I just need to chill just put this up but you know what we was talking about earlier is just the fact that kids now are growing up in this where they're seeing this live mm-hmm. I mean, when we was young like I said earlier um only thing the first thing I remember was the um the uh, Rodney King situation, but we were too young. It had already happened, you know, uh-huh. prior. I think they was just trying to go to case and stuff, but that's when they found all the officers. Like, they all got, like, acquitted, and they were all, like... That's a year, man. And so I was just like, man, what you thought was going to happen in L.A.? So <laughs> right. it was little, but... And now <laughs> you got these HD cameras pretty much in your pocket, and now kids... Are growing up seeing the people who are supposed to be protecting them, right. when taking them out for any little thing, you know, mm-hmm. it's trying to get a rise out of you. But you know, you can see a situation where a kid will go and shoot up a school, and they find a way to apprehend him like the most peaceful way possible. Mm-hmm. You know? yeah, I don't, that's something like that, and that I mean, I don't know how. Like I said, every department is different. Like I like I I got an apartment. We we have the type of department where our we call upper brass, the command staff, the chiefs and the lieutenants and stuff, they they will have your back only if you did your job right. Like if somebody complains and says, Oh, Pinson, to such and such, such and such, they'll they'll go review the video. And that's another thing with, with the video. Mm-hmm. You can't erase that, bro. Right. You know, the way our cameras are. You can't erase that shit. So if you do something stupid, you say call somebody a nigger, a bitch, hoe, whatever, it's on camera. So right. they don't see what you said. They're gonna hear it. So it's, it's you can't erase it. You've had some people try to do it and they got in trouble for it and they ain't got fired. That's crazy. And yeah, I mean, you, that's one thing about those cameras too, man. You know, and and we try to be, we try to, uh, what's the word I'm trying to use? We try to be transparent with the community, man. We try to, you know, we're doing things in law enforcement that we didn't do 10, 20 years ago. Like, you wouldn't see a body cam video 10, 20 years ago. They would be like, hell no. Was the stuff they were doing out there? Oh, no. Like, so I've what, talked to some older guys. No, go, go ahead. Yeah, I've talked to some older guys, and they were like, man, we did some stuff back in the day where I wouldn't even... I'm glad those cameras around wasn't around. And it wasn't nothing dirty. It was just this is the way like for instance, they'll like you know how cats like, man, you ain't shit without that badge, bro. Take the fucking belt off, bro. Yeah, and they'll take yeah. this shit off and we gonna get out there and get in the grass. Yeah, yeah. You better not. Yeah, that's old school right there. That's that's real old school. Yeah, your pops know, man, you know, they that's how they used to get out, man. They would hey man, you wanna fight, let's go. Let's do it. Take that badge off, man. We can handle this. But I right. uh, said nothing but a word. Right. <laughs> Hold my. Jeez, I've been waiting. Let's go. 
I have a, uh, I just have a question though. Like, were were you surprised of anything um, when you were in your training academy that you might not have known uh, from before? Was there anything in training that was just like, man, I didn't know this was okay? You know, man. Um, I mean, right now I'm actually it's funny because I'm right now I'm still training I'm in phase two of my process. We got one more phase to go. Oh, cool. Uh, so far, I've seen some stuff, man. Like when even when it comes to chases, like I didn't think that you could really drive as fast as they. Like I just the other day, we did a pursuit, man. We went from uh, Shepherd, North Shepherd, all the way to Jersey Village. We was chasing this guy, man. I mean, just my FTO was driving. I didn't get to drive this, but he was driving my one thirty. I didn't think you could do that, man. Like I didn't think that was even possible. That right. you would get in trouble and whatever, and, and there's some other stuff, man. Like, you know, our, some of our uh, staff, our command staff, they allow us to do, like, you know, as far as use of force. You know, I don't see it as much as we talked about it in the academy. Mm-hmm. And uh, another thing was was the jail, man. I didn't know the process was so long. Like, you know, mm-hmm. I, honestly, with me, bro, I don't want. If I don't have to take it to jail, I'm not taking it to jail, bro. Unless I have to, because that shit is a long. I don't think people realize like that shit could be hours, bro. Like DWRs, that shit is like six hours, dude. Oh, uh, if man. I said, yeah, we got to call, we got to take you in. We got first of all, I got to call the DA, tell them what's going on. I mean, all this stuff they they kind of touched on the academy, but we didn't know until we got out there, you know. So it's just like damn. And then, uh, I mean, pretty much everything else. They said happy, so it's mm-hmm. not like it's nothing crazy. Not yet. I haven't experienced something too crazy. But nothing, nothing surprised you like going from civilian to officer. Like, mm-hmm. No, man, it's just the same. It's just more. It's a, it's a respect thing, man. You know, I noticed when I got out there, people would try me on some. Like it was one dude that tried me, but then when he saw like I was on some chill shit, he he kind of calmed down. He was like, oh, because at first he was like, hey, what's your nigga? What's your name, nigga? All right. Fuck, I'm finna get, you know, he was talking like he was gonna come see my people. That's why if y'all notice on Facebook, I changed my name. Mm. Because <laughs> the dude, low key, was, I had me thinking like, damn. But one thing I would say is, once some people start no- noticing or knowing your name, that's when things get a little dangerous. Because it's like, mm-hmm. you know, they're thinking like, you gotta think, this person that you just put in jail, like if you talk, if you mistreat him, he is gonna come back out one day. Like, you're gonna see his ass again. That's one thing I would say. You will see the same people that you arrest, you will see it again. Sam, at some point during your career. You know? So, that's some that's shit that's kind of threw me off a little bit. But, yeah, it, it's, it's real out there, man. It's it's not too different as far as being a civilian. It's not too much different. I mean, I, I've already seen some of this shit already. Just working in the courthouse, you know? So mm-hmm. Yeah, you did a lot of time working in the courthouse, so you kind of got to get a background view. Okay. Yeah, I got. I mean, I got a chance to get to know different people's backgrounds. You know, Asian, you know, Dominican. I mean, I got a chance to meet everybody, man. People to get out of jail, going to jail. So, I kind of got a taste of it. And, and this is another thing, man. Like, how do you? And I won't speak on this department. How do you put a person that's never experienced anything outside their community into like you drop this this weenie and Third war somewhere, he ain't never been through nothing, he ain't never seen nothing, and you expect him to be able to police the way he's supposed to police. Mm-hmm. Without any type of hey, let me show you what it, let me show you how third war, let me show you about Yellowstone, let me show you about yeah. this place, that place, let me show you about Sky Street, how we work over here. <laughs> like nobody's doing that with some of these departments. They just throwing these guys out there, man. They not right. getting no getting their feet wet first. It's dangerous, bro. That's a, that's a big thing that we was uh, discussing before, like uh, <laughs> people actually getting involved in the community, walking yeah. around, mm-hmm. meeting people, and like just letting people know, like, hey, this is you know, I'm such and such. I'm here to protect mm-hmm. and get to know you. That way, I'll have mm-hmm. to on and rapport with you. So when anything does happen, I'm not trigger yeah. happy. I'm not just caught off guard, but I'm somewhat aware and I'm studying the neighborhood. Kind of. Mm-hmm. You know, that's how you build a relationship, and that's what I thought policemen were supposed to do, like, have a relationship. And we are. We're supposed to do it. We're supposed to be, you know, it started off, policing started off with 
officers were B cops at first. Before they got into the vehicles, before the seventies, they were B cops. They would walk around. They would meet everybody. They would meet the store owners. You know, let's say for instance, let's just talk about the black community. You see, in the black community, you're a police officer. You go to all the black owned businesses. Hey, I'm Officer Spencer. Hey, I'm I'm a new officer here. I just want to let y'all know if y'all need anything. Y'all let mm-hmm. me know. And we got that type of like you say, we build that rapport. So like when something happens as a robbery or something, hey. I was pissing this person such and such, and then I know the people around, and and the and it's not this is and let's let's get this clear, and this is for all the viewers or whoever. It's not snitching to prevent a crime, okay? It's snitching when you commit a crime with someone else, and then you rat them out because you're trying to get less time for your sentence. Mm-hmm. That's the, Facts. You know, people got that screwed up and the code of the street screwed up. It's, that's not snitching to prevent a crime. I can't, I wouldn't call it snitching if, you know, Ross's grandmother's house got broken into and I told the person, I told the police who did it. That's not snitching. Mm-hmm. And I think people got that mixed up and that's why they don't, it's hard for them. It's hard. That's, that's part of the disconnect is mm-hmm. that people are talk. don't talk to the police. Oh, mm-hmm. I mean, they don't, you know, and I will say this. Yes, if you have, if you do an interview with a police officer, you need to have your lawyer with you. Don't be stupid and be standing around talking to them and telling your life story and <laughs> because they'll use that shit. Because <laughs> you got people that are going to the, you ever see like over oh, forty eight, worst forty eight, they'll be sitting in there just going. I'm like, bro, you are dumb. Like, go get you a lawyer, bro. Buying the water burger and all kind of stuff. Just, just. Yeah, like, yeah, I tell you, where, <laughs> I tell you where he's at. <laughs> But yeah, man. I mean, it's just that's it's just a disconnect, bro. It's a disconnect. So, so, um, what, what made you want to be a, uh, an officer? Like, what, what, what motivates you to to keep going every day? What, what, what did you? What well, wanted me to do it, or what? What motivates me now? Well, well, what, first, what made you want to be an officer, and then mm-hmm. keeps you okay. motivated to continue. So this is a, this is a crazy story, man. So when I try to make it short. So when I graduated from college, I was already in a internship with Andrews Carter. It was a corporate law firm. Huh? What college did you go to? I went to Prairie View University. You know, Sorry. Yeah, you already know, uh, man. Hey. You, 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 man, you got to make some notes. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm, sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when I graduated from Prairie View, man, uh, I was already in an internship with Andrews Curve. It was actually... Uh, this is a program that was called the L. Franco Lee program. I don't know if anybody remember Commissioner L. Franco Lee that passed. He was the uh, commissioner for Harris County. Okay. And he set me up in a program or whatever. My mom actually helped set it up. Rest in peace. Uh, Rest in peace, man. Yeah, mm-hmm. man. Uh, she, she helped set that up and whatnot. And, and while I was in it, I was given opportunities to work with corporate lawyers. I mean, these people were... One of the ladies that I was talking to, she was fighting a case for... Muhammad Ali, man, you had people, you know, fighting like million dollar cases with Walmart. They were representing these corporations. And I was like, man, I don't want to do that. And I was like, okay, you can do this thing, man, but you just need to know this is what comes with it. And they were teaching me, they would give me the game. And I just went down and I was like, man, you know, do I really want to do this. Like, I wanted the money, but I didn't have the spirit for it. Right. And I was hmm. like, man, this ain't, this ain't, this ain't going to happen. So I ended up working at, I uh, couldn't find a job, and then my mom ended up telling me, hey, man, they got some openings at the courthouse. So I ended up working at the courthouse. And while I was there, my sergeant, he was like, hey, man, um, if you ever want to be a police officer, man, just let me know. And I was like, all right, I'll just, I'll help you get into the academy. I was like, okay. So I was just, I was, I was talking at the time to my, it was an ex-girlfriend, and I was talking to her about it. And she was like, yeah, you know, you could do it, whatever. And, you know, at the time, I didn't think anybody would, you know, if I thought about it, I was like, well, if I do it, nobody going to really care. They're not going to help me out with it because, you know, nobody like the police. Right. So I was like, all right, I'll give it a try. So I went and applied for HPD. I got all the way through to the end of the process, and some stuff came up about something I didn't do. I think you might know the story about that. Yeah. So, yeah, that, that happened, and, and uh, you know, I said, man – I tried something else. So I tried other places. I got turned down. And then I finally said, you know, I'm going to put myself through the academy. And I put myself through. And uh, uh, I've been working ever since, man. You know, and, uh, the thing, and the thing that, like, the thing that keeps me going, man, is just knowing that I'm out here making a difference and people depend on me, man. Like, people are literally like, dude, 
I'm I feel safe knowing that you are here working. That means a lot, bro. Like, cause you don't really expect to get any type of pat on the back and then, cause it's not. This is a thankless job, bro. Like, you're not finna get no. Oh my god! Like, you might go to the heights and they'd be like, Oh my god! You know, thank you, officer. And you know, we appreciate you. Here's donuts and cookies and all that. I mean, they do that, but you don't get that from the from our community like that. You don't get all the. Oh, man, I appreciate you, bro, boy. You know, but then again. A lot of you, you and my some of my other friends, y'all, y'all, y'all motivate me to do this job man, every day because I know like I'm doing this for y'all, bro. Like it's not, it's not even for me, you know. Because you can't pay me to risk my life, bro. I'm just be honest with you. I would have took that corporate job and I would have been making probably millions of dollars right now. They was gonna pay for me. You know these fools gonna pay for me to go to school, bro. That's, that's awesome. To law school. But I you, put that you, away. you said the right thing, though, man. You you Shut said up, you you wasn't really. In it, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, the money don't mean nothing if you ain't happy because you can be making a million a year, but miserable. You know what I'm saying? You know how a lot of these millionaires commit suicide and stuff because the money ain't mending what's really broken inside your heart and just right. boy. So, you know, again, we do appreciate you, bro. Like, you know, we do. I tell you every day, bro, we appreciate you. As it's, it's honorable, you know what I'm saying, for you to take that stand, put that uniform on every day mm -hmm. yourself. And it's not, you know what I'm saying? Like you said, it's just for you, but it's for a, a mass of people. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You know, what you're doing also is helping men the, the relationship from people from our community because, you know, like you were saying earlier, people don't really mess with the cops, but it's not because it started off uh, peaches and cream. You know mm -hmm. I forget how cops, what they were doing at one point in time when slaves was out. You know what I'm saying? And oh, man, it was me. You know, it's like we can go way back to how cops did black people to the reason why mm -hmm. this disconnect. You know what I'm saying? And we continue to have a disconnect uh, just from the recent situations that happened to George Floyd. So, mm -hmm. what you're doing is you kind of showing people, like, hey, man, I'm from your neighborhood. I grew up where you did, but look. We we don't have to be apart. Come together. Mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, man. You know, it's nothing wrong with that, man. That's 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 just my plan, bro. You know, and I'm in it for the long call, man. I mean, I'm still I'm still a professional musician and all that. And that's another thing. I asked God for a job that would allow me to do what I love and also to be able to be with my family. And that it's a blessing to have that, man. Like, so a couple, you know. I'm, I'm where I'm, I'm where I'm like you remember one day I came to your house and I was like man I can't wait to be like this he was like bro your time is coming bro yeah. and it's here you know I'm finally where I'm I got a kid on the way got a wife hey hey, man, it's, <laughs> hey it's going down bro <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's, that's even more of a reason, too, because you, you got somebody now. Yeah. You know how when you're young, you're like, man, I want to be a cop. I want to be. But the fact that, you know, your child's going to have that first hand role model, you know what I'm saying, to yeah. give them game and give it to them the right yeah. way. You know what I'm saying? You, you'll be able to, you, you're adding positivity to the future generation and you're not right. poisoning it more. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know how certain people, you know, like where we grew up, we could have mm -hmm. easily been. Down, oh man, bro, you and, nah. and had kids and taught them the same thing, and just like, nah, this is how we do it out here in the street. You know, what I'm we man, we had to change, man. Yeah, we had to grow up because yeah. I mean, we you got cats out there that's that's still doing that lifestyle, and then it's crazy, those same cats right now are supported. That's the that just blows me away, bro. People that I never thought would support what I'm doing that's in the streets, they like, hey, bro, I'm, I'm down with you, bro. I'm from the you know what I'm saying? You good, bro. And that's just, that's a blessing to have it. Because, you know, when I first got out, I was like, man, what's going to happen, bro? Am I going to lose? I lost people that I didn't need anyway. But the mm -hmm. people that I gained nice. were people that I, yeah, I gained people that I never thought I would have on my side. You know, mm -hmm. I had somebody, one dude share my, my uh, when I got sworn in, dude shared my photo in one of my high school groups. And I was like, man, this is the same dude we used to hang out with. This cat was getting in all kinds of stuff, man, going to jail and all this stuff, and this guy still wants to, to help me. You know what I'm saying? That just goes to show you, like, maybe something, maybe it's something I did back when we were hanging out that made him feel like, okay, this dude's solid. So if he put the uniform on, I know he ain't finna slide, he ain't finna flip on me. You know what I'm saying? Like, my thing is I gotta, I gotta always be professional. That's that's the thing they always tell us. 
I ain't professional no matter what's going on. You know, do your job. You know, people don't realize like we we hold a really we have we hold a very dangerous responsibility. And I say dangerous because we we can literally we can literally take a life if we had to if we needed to protect the community. Like let's say somebody ran into a crowd with a gun and we like I'm I'm there to protect y'all, bro. Like. Somebody gotta somebody gotta stop this guy. Right. Now what I do, that's up to me. That's I have to make a split decision, but that decision has to be made off of professional out of professionalism and not my emotions. Mm-hmm. You know? So I can't go choking this guy because he's trying to run into that crowd with that gun. I gotta figure like, damn, what am I gonna do? Like, okay, I can deploy my, you know, I gotta at this point we got motherfucker got a gun to say he got he gonna get shot. I'm just being honest. Right. Like Somebody going to shoot him. It may not be me. It may be some tactical person that come out of nowhere. And, I mean, but we got to stop this guy. So it's just like, that's a split decision. Like, damn, what do I do? You know, mm-hmm. hey, sir, put the gun down. You know, if you don't put the gun down, you're going to shoot. Oh, man, motherfucker. And then next, you know, he's he's on the ground. And then the videos are circulating. So it's like, if I didn't do the right thing in that moment, it's going to be on the news. Mm-hmm. It's going to be on all media platforms. So... That's why it's important to make the right decisions, man, and use use wisdom. You know what I'm saying? And that's that's why we also can trust. Like that's that's why uh, deep trust is for officers like yourself. Because look mm-hmm. at the, the scenario you chose. I mean, you already mm-hmm. went straight to a person with a gun in the crowd. I mean, I, I think anybody would go for that. And mine, right. I got to take him out before he, you know, take lives. But you know, for for people that is, are just in non-violent situations to take lives. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you, know, you you already are mentally aware of trying to take a, a the lesser route, you know, the, the easier mm-hmm. route instead of, you know, somebody being, you know, you thought he had a cell phone in his hand or you thought the kid that's playing with a BB gun was a real gun. You, mm-hmm. uh, uh, so many- The one thing you put, I'll be real, you put a gun at me, man. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta do what I need to do. But my thing is, if we know, if you we're in a position to help you to come out of this situation, in, then let's do that. Let me mm-hmm. not prejudge the situation unless it's just already deadly. If it's deadly already, I'm gonna have to do use deadly force. It's just what I gotta do based on my policies and procedures. Whatever I was taught to do in a certain situation like that, I gotta do it. But if we can help you, if we we have new technology now, man, where we got this little thing. I don't know if y'all seen it, but it's called a bolo. Uh-huh. And I'm a, I'll see you the video. Like it's like a, a little, it's weird, bro. It's like this little. It's almost like a taser, but it's this little string that pops out and it grabs you around the ankles, and it grabs you around the arms, and you just like this. Mm. That's better than getting tased. That's better than getting shot. Man. You got be, you got beanbag rounds. You got these these non lethal rounds. But you know, like I said, we try to use what we can, man. We try not to. We're not out here trying to play cowboy. Like, I'm not out here trying to shoot everybody. Right, you know what I'm saying? If I don't have to do. If I don't have to ever use my gun. I prom- I pray to God I don't have to ever use that shit. I really don't. See, that's dope, bro. Because some people come in. Mm-hmm. And, All right, where 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 are we going? What are we doing? You know? Yeah. Oh, bro. Oh my God. I got people like I've seen officers like that, man. Now I've seen guys that's like ready to go, and I'm like, okay, yeah, we need to be tactical. We need to be ready to go. But let's remember. You're dealing with a human being, man. Mm-hmm. Even with these dogs, man. You you dealing with humans, bro. Yes, if we tell you get the hell out of this area, we're gonna send the dog in. If we've already given you a warning or two, okay, we're gonna have to send the dog in. But then as at some point, control your damn dog. Or control mm-hmm. your whatever your people, if you, if you got your guns out, it's a felony stop or whatever, and we got our guns drawn. Hey, nobody take any shots until I tell you to. Hold your fire. Mm-hmm. You got that one. You see on the movies where you got like on Queen of Slim, you got that one idiot that's like, uh, 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 and it's like, God damn, man. Like, why you, you searching the rush to kill somebody, bro? Like, me told you to hold your fire. But like, that's the type of shit that pissed me off when I, when I see shit like that. You know what I'm saying? And it's pissing the world off, you know? So hopefully yeah. with what's going on right now, man, a lot of people are championing for change. And I'm yep. glad that people are able to. It's it's been going on, so I I, I don't want to play them. Man, it's been happening. Y'all should have been paying attention. No, while we got people's attention, 
while people are, can't go to games and ain't no sports, there's nothing else going on. Every, every time. Everybody yeah. is able to see the injustices that are going on to African Americans and turning a blind eye to it, you're part of the problem. A lot of people are standing up and they're trying to figure out reform, trying to change this world and this this inequality stuff that's going on. It's been going on for too long, man. Oh man. We live in I don't even know if people realize this. We right now, man, this is I think this 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 man, bro, you know, Floyd, I mean, this dude, I don't even think he, I don't even think his people realize, like, the impact of this whole situation, man. Rest in peace to this brother, man. Like, this guy, I don't even think his daughter realizes that she made that comment, my dad's changing the world. This guy literally just in a matter of days, dog, this guy literally got people having a conversation that will never have this conversation. Mm -hmm. I mean, they even strong arm the damn commissioner, dog. NFL commissioner, dog. That man apologized. You got everybody out here apologizing. Oh, I'm so sorry. We, because it's like we've been trying to tell y'all ass, man, for years. Right. Mm -hmm. We've been trying to tell you this. Even even for y'all, man. Like just yeah. like you said earlier, like when you take your badge off, man. You know, your your badge is not tattooed on you. There's no. Nah, bro. I'm still, yeah. I'm still black. I go to I go to Jasper, Texas, or anywhere, Walla County. Hey man, you better have your shit. I better have my shit already out because they gonna automatically. Uh oh, you finna go get them. Mm -hmm. That's a jazz. Yeah, that, that sound. Mm, that. <laughs> hey man, like I'm telling you, bro, it's it's you got some guys out there, man, that have some really. I mean, man, you got some you got some dudes out there that don't need to be in uniform. Dog. I'm being honest with you. And I'll tell you, I'll say this in front of their faces. You, you, you don't need to be in uniform, dog. Mm -hmm. You got no type of feelings. I had a, and I'll tell y'all this, man. I have a trainer, I had a trainer, like, the beginning of my, my training period, bro. He made some, some comments, like, okay, so, like, one time we were driving, we were driving through Acres Home, man. We, we, uh, we, we went to uh, a neighborhood in Houston. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, went to, we was out there in Alabama, man, at the apartments, and he was just like, yeah, look at this shithole. I'm like, Oh, do you realize those are my people, bro? Like you, this who you talking about my motherfucking people, bro? Right. Mm -hmm. But like, give me another example. So this dude, we drove through the Heights. He loves the Heights, man. He always like going to the damn Heights. So we went to the Heights in Houston, man. And uh, he said, "There's a house that's made out of you know." I'm sorry. He said, "There's a strange house out here that everybody knows about. It's like the craziest house in Houston. If you know about it, then." You know, you're from Houston or whatever. I'm like, whatever, dude. So, like, I drove by the house and it looked kind of weird. And it was made out of beer cans, right? Mm -hmm. But I was like, I was like, hey, is this the house? He was like, yeah, that's the house, but I'm sure you probably would have noticed it if it was made out of 40 ounces. Oh, yeah. We would have to take out the badge. Hey, man, this man, though, I don't know if he was trying to test me or he was trying, because, you know, when you're, when you're a, a, what do you, what are we, a rookie, whatever. You're not supposed to, like, during the process, you're not supposed to, like, go back at it and forth with your, your FTO. Mm -hmm. Anything that happens, you need to bring it up to the chain of command. So this guy would, I mean, he would put all kinds of bad value. He would put bad stuff in my evaluations. And I said I was going to say something, and then God was like, nah, just just chill out. And as soon as I chilled out, I got a, uh, we had a, we had a meeting, a, a training meeting, and my training sergeant was like, hey, uh, the chief, mind you, our chief was, our chief was uh, African-American, right? Mm -hmm. Our chief was like, I want to put you with somebody else. I was like, what? So he ended up sending me to another black guy, man. And I not only this guy took me from wherever I was, he was like, the first day he was like, okay, okay, what you need help on? And I was telling him what I need help on. And in a matter of less than a week, uh, he said, I, he seemed like a, Huge change in my in my everything, bro. And he was like, I don't know what was what wrong with the other guy, bro, but you're doing everything that he said that you couldn't do. Right. Mm. Ain't that something? You right. see me, and ever since I've been doing really good, bro. And it's like this, and oh, oh, oh. So let me give you another story, bro. So I feel like I'm venting right now because it's just <laughs> hey. This hey, 
Four, man. Hey, v, man. Let the people know what's up, dude. We need no. So we had a domestic call. This, you know, domestic calls are one of the most dangerous calls yeah. that you can have. A lot of people get shot. I don't know if you remember about the black officer chick. I can't remember her name. She got shot at a domestic call. Um, rest in peace to her. I mean, I'll, I'll find her name later and put it on somewhere. But uh, we got a domestic call to this house, man. It was a Hispanic uh, household. And uh, we get there, and the lady's like, hey, um, my husband just came by with his girlfriend and this and that. Yes, her husband came by with his girlfriend. He got some balls, boy. He came out with his girlfriend. <laughs> she, the girl got out the car. She said the girl got out the car so whooping her ass because she confronted him. And then the dad was trying to stop them. And then the son came out and saw the girl, the girlfriend on top of the mom and started whooping her ass. And then like everything, everything was over after we finished talking about it. She was like, "Hey, I've been having, I've been married to this guy since '96. He's been, he's been beating on me." Yeah. All kinds yeah. of stuff, and she was like, um, "We've we've had some officers come out here to speak to us, and the last person that came to us on May twenty third, and he said that I just need to get a divorce. Mind you, she got her ass whooped that same day, and he said she you need to get a divorce, and he left. He didn't take a report or nothing. Guess who that person was? The dude who was training you. Yes." <laughs> The same guy that was just training me, dog. <laughs> That's crazy. My current FTO was like, "I'm gonna, we, I'm gonna have to mention that." He said, "I got, I got, I got." He, he, he's gonna get on, he's gonna, he's gonna get on his ass about that, bro. Because he was like, "Why, like this lady could be dead right now?" Because right. you just got over here. That's very dangerous, bro. Like you let this lady stay in this house since May. Mm-hmm. Like, mind you, we can't kick the husband out because, I mean, he stays there. He's, they're still married. I mean, tell you, you got to get a divorce. The divorce process is not that hard if you got a domestic situation. And something that y'all are supposed to, like, be involved with. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. Got to go handle that on their own. It's, it's, and so we end up, you know, we end up doing, taking a report. And we and this is another thing, you know, just for our, people, our listeners out there, man, like, if y'all guys have any, you know, have any issues with domestic violence, they have to. Victims assistance packets at these police stations. I, I, when I get back to work, I'll get some and send it to you, man. Like to give out, and uh, you have those, man. We have free legal services for people, man. That's through the county. I mean, that's help out there, man. And people don't have to sit there and, and suffer like that. And we told that lady, man, if you have any issues, man, you can contact us. If you have any issues with that officer, you report that officer, man. Mm-hmm. It's gonna be. Your voice will be heard, dog. Uh, like if it's some bullshit, like, oh, I don't like that he gave me a ticket. Man, we not, they not finna play with you like that. They gonna be like, bro, get get the hell out of here with that. Bro. But if it's something legit, bro, they're gonna look into it. They're gonna review those body cams. They're gonna mm-hmm. look at those reports. We gotta have our reports in before I ship every day. So if something happens, God forbid, another domestic call or whatever, and somebody dies, the first thing they're gonna do is they're gonna say, hey, Pinson, where's that report at? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I can't be like, oh, I, I let. And, and in our policy, it says you shall take a report when it comes to family. Even in this book right here, mm-hmm. in the penal code, it says you shall take a report mm-hmm. when it's dealing with family violence. You, you cannot just sit over here and be like, oh, well, you just need to get a divorce and you need to stop living. No. Mm-hmm. That's not cool, man. So, I mean, that, that type of stuff happens, man. Like, this is just, this is real life. I, it's real to me, bro. Like I thought this shit didn't happen. It really does happen. Right. But you know what, man? It's it's phenomenal, bro, because although there's a lot of bad things going on in the world, it's good to see that there's good people that that mm-hmm. are genuine, are genuine about uh, their job and they keep you serious. And we need more people that's gonna take you serious like you, uh Ross yeah. Ed and stuff like that. Like more people and you know, we wanted to kind of put you guys on this platform so that way people can see that, you know what I'm saying? Because you're not, you're not really always seeing officers, you know, tell their side. And, uh, mm-hmm. Once you got that, it's, you know, it's like a real conversation. Unwinding, um, suits and ties and all that. We just over here having a general conversation and letting you take the floor and people get to see like, man, they human too. They they deal with stuff. Man, uh, we, right as well. we get pissed. When we see shit like that, man, across the screen, 
you know, unarmed. And it's like, God damn, like we be, because when we go in the station, we just like the screen, you know, these big ass screens, you just be looking like, what the fuck, bro? And then like, it's just, like, like I said before, man, it, it shits on all of the work, the hard work that we do every day. Right. To, to, to make things better, bro. Mm-hmm. To be to be more transparent and and to take take things serious, man. Not to sit up here and be like the like homeboy and just be like, oh well, you just need to get a divorce. That's unacceptable, man. Mm-hmm. And, and you know, hope, you know, every every you know, everybody gonna have to deal with uh, an answer. You know, they always got an answer to whatever it is that they've done. You know what I'm saying? You're not just gonna get away with stuff. Uh, mm-hmm. Stuff like that. That again, like you said, God forbid, but something could have happened to her and then he yeah. would have never taken the report before. And so it would have been like, oh, we didn't even know there was ever a problem because yep. he had to report in the first uh, chance he got. So, um, but no, nah, man, again, we, we definitely appreciate you for joining, man. Um, we definitely got to have more conversations. And we definitely are glad and we're honored that you were able to take the time from your busy day and your schedule. Man, I'm honored to have you on here, man. Good, bro. Not for real. Just, just to have you on this platform because – you know, it's a lot of younger kids that, that watch our videos and stuff. And, you know, for those that, that do get a chance to check this out, man, we want them to know that there's some, there's some great ones out here, man. There's some people that's feeling the same thing that they're feeling, whether you're on the side with the badge or not. We're all human at the end of the day. And we just want them to know we got people that's like-minded, come from the same neighborhood, share the same views, but y'all not just talking. Uh, I know that you're a rookie, but I know once you get in there, man, you're going to do everything you can. Uh, bring wrong to forefront, you know. What I'm oh man, it's it's a lot of and it, just I'm glad you said that too, man. Before we go, like it's a lot of guys, it's a lot of officers, man. Not just black, but there's a lot of officers that are speaking out. I don't know if you've been seeing like mm-hmm. HVD chief on down, man. It's people that's big up, like we are tired because it's like you putting us at so much risk, dog. Like <laughs> you, bro, like. These people working 12 hour days now because we can't go home. You got to keep your cars. We don't want our cars get messed. I mean, it's because think about it. We All our cars get damaged because you got people that's upset. Now we can't get to our cars. Now we can't we right. can't do our job to protect you. And mm-hmm. so it's like, what good does it do? Like, and people saying, oh, man, people messing on your shit. I'm like, I'm not agreeing with it. I'm, 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 if I catch somebody doing it, you're going to have some problems. But then again, the human side of me is like, I understand the frustration. Mm-hmm. I really understand why you're doing what you're doing. It's not right. And y'all can say, you get caught, you're going to get in trouble. But uh, it's yeah. like, how can I be mad at somebody for being upset at something that's been going on? Right. Keep telling them, we're going to get better. We're going to do this. We're going to do right. And then you just keep on fucking up. And then not only that, but you keep on acquitting officers that clearly commit murder. Oh. Bro, if this don't let these these fools get off, oh my god! Yeah, and dog, just, yeah. Man, look. <laughs> that's what I told my. Wife. I said, "What just happened? Everything <laughs> just, just happened in the past week or so." That's yeah. pre warm up. If these that's fools don't up. don't get time, I mean <laughs> the book, all hell gonna break loose. And I, I feel like they know. Like I pray that they understand. How important this decision is for the that's world. That's why they fight them fools, bro. Because you know when you with the when you, when you with the department, we have what they call we have the, we have our, our unions and we have union lawyers and stuff, man. Mm-hmm. We have like, I have I have some powerful lawyers in my back pocket right now. If something happens to me, happens with me off duty and on duty, I got people I can contact. But at the same time, when you get fired from the department, you lose all that shit. Right. So every piece of protection you can think of, you got to hire people out of your pocket, which may cost you upwards of hundreds of thousands of dollars, man. Mm-hmm. Those guys are going to have a... Man, they're going to have to really come... They're going to probably lose everything by trying to get trying to get through. Oh, yeah. Like, just just even being... I mean, just not even... For the ones that didn't stop it, again, you turn the blind yeah. to it, so you're just as guilty as, mm-hmm. as your had his knee on his neck. And, and you know, like, again, bro, like, you, you hate that it has to come down to a uh, loss of life, but um, it, it's taking this to shake up the world again because yep. we're, we're, we're idle right now. So all we got is time to be at home. You know, a lot of people have been at home and stuff like that. So 
this really is magnified on another level because people are idle right now. So you got you have no you have nothing else but to to see what's going on. You know what I'm saying? So again, appreciate people like yourself and Ross's dad that that out there is really trying to be a change and not just trying to be a badge, not just trying to be another officer, just letting things go and turning blind eye to stuff and just you know, letting things happen that you know is illegal or wrong, uh, especially right. because it could be somebody in your family. You know what I'm saying? Like, so that's that's important and it's key. And uh, again, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up here, man. Um, we want to get you back on here, man, hopefully in a better situation. Hopefully, we talk about the Texans that's on your shirt. You know, hey man, sure. hey. <laughs> we <laughs> trying to get better, bro. We try. We gotta get these boys together, bro. I don't know what's gonna happen this next yeah. season. That's a whole I'm other part. <laughs> I'm whole scared, part <laughs> but now again, bro, this ladies and gentlemen, uh, Officer Spencer here, man. We again appreciate these guys for taking their time. Yeah. I don't think you yeah, understand how much you appreciate that, bro, for coming yeah. on the platform. It's much appreciated. You guys have a voice. You know what I'm saying? And we glad that you decided to have it heard on our channel. So hey, man, this this is therapy, dog. Too man, this is what this one just be talking. You know, I you saw it seem like hey, this boy passionate, but that's it's therapy because I don't need to talk. That's dope. Mm -hmm. Pretty much, man. No, nah, that's dope, and we need that because people again yeah. people need to see that side. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. how did you see that one? When you take me to jail side. No, nah, we want to. You know, people want to see that you're human as well. You know what I'm saying? And you, you oh, share, sure. And you share the same <laughs> people, so that make people more comfortable uh, when they do see an officer outside instead of just. Hate, they'll probably think of him like, man, you know what? He, 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 me too. He probably feel the same way I do. He probably just got more, you know, standards and stuff than I do. But, you know, there's, there's some good officers out there. But at the same time, officers need to come together and, and show them, you know what I'm saying? Yes. They're not going to be okay with it if they just keep hiding and not saying nothing. So, uh, again, appreciate you guys. Episode 24 was pretty dope. It was a really and much needed one. And so, mm -hmm. if you're still here, appreciate you for watching, ladies and gentlemen. We are out. Peace. We'll catch you next episode. All right.